AJ here with BFC. Today's low budget video, we are talking arrow rest. Because I'm an idiot. Let's check it out. So, not too long ago, I picked up this arrow rest. This is the Cupid Removable Recurve Bow Mag Netric Arrow Rest. It says so right there. Netric arrow rest and it says that the quality without a compromise they can't print it if it's not true duh quality without compromise why am i testing arrow rest simple because i broke mine now uh i broke it because i wasn't using it properly because like a complete moron and idiot i wasn't doing the right thing <sighs> but hey, I got a new one, and that's almost all that matters. Technically, I have two, but this is what I got. And, well, this is an old one. Well, this is a used one. It's just like the old one that I broke. And I'm going to show you what I did here to make myself look stupid. So, this part is the actual arrow rest. And what that is, I don't know why I threw this over there, but this is the Cupid arrow rest. It has a little arm here and it's got the little adjustments back there. Let's do it this way so it'll be easier. So you've got your arm here, which is a magnetic uh, deal on it. It's got a magnet in the back here. This uh, is an adjustment screw for your, I don't know, Listen back and forth makes it come up here so you can adjust it the way you want to and then you have this allen key here which will allow you to move it up and down uh, now i wanted to try this arrow rest because i thought it looked neat i mean what the hell i bought the bow because i thought it looked cool and it's worked out great for me let me see if this will do the same thing so picked up this arrow rest uh i don't remember let's see if i have it here uh, Oh, it wasn't very expensive. I, I can't find it. It wasn't very expensive. So maybe 20 bucks, probably less than that. Knowing me, it was probably less than $20. I picked it up a long time ago, and I didn't actually start using it until the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, but now what I was doing when I had this arrow rest, pardon the bow being upside down, but I wasn't holding this thing on there properly. I had it like this. So this arrow rest, I had the arrow resting here, and it would go up against the bow so it was resting against the face of the bow and i know this is you kind of have to bear with me because i already got this mount and i don't want to take it off but uh, it was sitting here and it was resting against the side of the bow now when i was told that i had it on backwards it was too late because i already broke it talking to my buddy he was like hey i broke my arrest he's like well it's because you're an idiot you had the dang thing on wrong the whole time and you're just now telling me but anyways <clears throat> Uh, my arrow as I was shooting it uh, I'm about to break this my arrow as I was shooting it this side of the bow the arrow was going out and it would go like this and the reason it was doing that was because the uh, quivers were hitting the side of the bow and it would just come out and it would go off wobbly and stuff until it actually straightened out right before it hit the target now I, the whole time I thought that was me I thought that when I had the bow what I was doing, I was plucking my release instead of releasing my release. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why it wasn't working right. I was sitting there paying attention, making sure I was doing everything by the numbers. And I wasn't getting a quality shot. I mean, I was getting where I needed to. And uh, it was effective in the point that I was hitting what I wanted to hit. But I wasn't getting the velocity. And I wasn't getting the grouping that I would hope that I was going to get. And... Uh, that grouping that I was getting in those hits in that area that I wanted to hit uh, was getting worse over a longer distance. And that's just because that arrow was just all over the place as it was leaving the bow. What I should have done was had the arrow rest facing like this. I apologize for hitting the camera, but here and here. So the arrow should have sat here, this being the face of the bow should have sat here so when it came off there was room between 
the bow face and the actual arrow so the quiver wouldn't hit it and it would go straight out. If I didn't just confuse you, uh, then you're like, no crap, duh. So, here's the thing. Uh, I picked up this arrow rest for a, I think it was around $20. So we're just going to say $20 because I have no idea. Uh, I got it on Amazon, so it wouldn't be hard to find the Cupid removable recurve bow magnetic arrow rest, whatever it's called. So, uh, now, the way this thing is designed, that wasn't very good. The way this thing is designed is that when the arrow goes through, the quivers will hit this bar and it'll push it in. And then a magnet will pull it back out. Man, that was not good. So in, out. So it goes in, arrow comes in, hits it, and then a magnet pulls back out. Now, I know what you're asking. Why in the heck do you have the other one on there? It doesn't make any sense. So this arrow rest is on here because it is holding this arrow rest in place. And the reason for that is because I needed this offset. I didn't want to spend money on a plunger for two reasons. One, I'm cheap. I don't like spending money. And two, well, actually three reasons, because this was free. I guess it goes part of one. But anyway, I needed that offset and I didn't want to pay for a plunger. Now, a plunger is a, a piece of equipment that goes through and then creates this offset against the bow and you can adjust it back and forth. You can create your offset and adjust your offset the way you want it to. Now, I didn't know about plungers until I was actually doing research on bows or on arrow rest. So I'm not an expert on them by any means, but I do know this. I was told a thousand times that if you have this arrow rest and you only have one mounting hole on your bow, do not use a plunger to mount that arrow rest on because it will damage the plunger. The plungers aren't designed to hold that in place. Technically, either is this arrow rest, but this arrow rest is made out of plastic uh, and it creates a good pinch once you tighten it down. Also, I put a little bit of Loctite on there or thread locker or whatever you want to call it just to help hold it into place. Uh, and then I have a washer and then a nut keeping everything there. Now, what I can do, should I break this arrow rest, I can just pull this one out flip it around, put it in correctly, and then I have a backup arrow rest. It's probably not going to happen, but should I need that in a survival situation, I will have it. Anyways, my first thoughts on this arrow rest. Uh, I like it. I like this arrow rest. I think it's a pretty neat little deal. Like I said, I got it because I thought it was cool. Uh, but, like a plunger, I can adjust that offset. Let me go this way because it might be easier to see. So I can adjust this offset down here between the bow face and the arrow just by pulling this, unscrewing this or screwing it in more. I actually have it in all the way. And, uh, and the reason I do that is because from where the string sits and the arrow, it is a direct line. So I have a direct line from where the string and the arrow goes straight in. So there's no deviation off to where the arrow sits. It's just sitting straight, and that's what kind of what I wanted. Now, the first time I shot this thing, the arrow actually went straight, and it had a noticeably more power. Now, so I will put this up against the chronograph again just to see the differences in the power. Plus, I want to test these. Uh, Masaya, I think I'm saying that right, Masaya arrows, these 400, 39 inch 400s, <clears throat> which were recommended for this 40 pound bow, so uh, I want to do that. Also, I changed the tips on them, I got some bullet tips, just because I was going through the target and into my shed, uh, where these will go through the target and maybe hit the shed, but won't actually go into it, so hoping to do less damage to my shed. That is why I'm replacing the arrow rest. That is why I got this arrow rest. Uh, another mounting feature that you could do, I know I'm jumping all over the place and I apologize for that, 
is you could use some double sided tape to hold this on. Now, originally I put the bolt in there that, that came with the kit. <clears throat> Looks like this. Now, originally I put that in there and then I realized uh, I was in the same boat. I didn't have that offset right here. So, and that's what dawned on me. Well, I was just given this new error rest. Why don't I use that? Figured I'd check it out, see if it worked. Maybe I need to bevel the end off of it so it's not hitting the quivers as it's going through. Uh, bada boo, bada bing, everything's working out fine. So I'm not having any damage to my arrows. Everything seems to be flying off. I'm getting better velocity. I'm getting better accuracy, even though I will be taking this thing off. Uh, but <clears throat> I think that's enough rambling for now. So let's go to backyard. Let's throw some arrows down range and uh, Let's just see what happens. Uh, so here we are at the uh, BSC archery range, aka my backyard. Uh, and uh, so let's throw some arrows down there and see if we can't hit that thing there. It looks a little smaller than it is. Uh, about 20 yards out. So uh, let's see if we can't hurt ourselves. Uh, let's see if we can't get it to do what it's supposed to do so uh, let me move this a little closer don't need to be that far back I guess so uh, minor adjustments technical difficulties yada yada so on and so forth so uh, got the air rest on I got my knocks adjusted that is way off I will not be using uh, the sight so much as a center mass flight pitcher uh, so we're using Kentucky windage. I have shot a couple just to make sure I'm actually going to hit the target. And I'm using the uh, Tiger Archer arrows just because they're more of a test arrow at this point. If I'm destroying them, I, then I'm destroying them. So uh, let's see what we got. So a little low. We're actually. I'm not so much here just to get in par target or the center mass. Uh, I just want to see how my grouping's doing. So I want to make sure my grouping's not too far off, my arrows aren't getting destroyed, and my ego is intact. Not bad. Those last two look like they're all right. The first one was uh, probably me. I kind of like the rest in that it's uh, it seems to get a smoother release. I'm not all over the place like I was before. I may need to adjust that a little bit as far as my uh, positioning or my offset away from the face. But honestly, I'm pretty straight down the line. And my grouping seems to be all right. So let's go take a look at those first six, I think is what I shot, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, my finger was in the way, my bad. So here's my grouping on my first shot. So it's not too bad. I got this one down here. Uh, that was all me, that was the first shot. But the other five seem to be where they need to be. Uh, and again, I'm using Kentucky Windage, aiming at the same point. Uh, on the target each time and it seems to be doing okay. So let's uh, put some more down here and see what happens I look goofing off there. So, uh, yeah, I'm over here. Uh, so I kind of did all right. Uh, I was actually aiming for this spot here. So two out of five ain't good, but uh, not doing too bad. If you look at the arrows, uh, this was actually hit by another arrow, but 
Uh, everything seems to be doing all right on them. Uh, so I'm not hitting anything. I'm not peeling anything up. You know, we'll get a better look at that here in a second. So not bad. Uh, so I'm not seeing anything, excuse me, crazy on the arrows. Everything seems to be good. Uh, this one here has a little bit of, that actually happened with the sight on the last, uh, last arrow rest. Uh, but as far as what's going on now, because I did inspect these before I started shooting, and they seem to be doing fine. Uh, nothing too crazy. The heads on them are doing all right. I did hit the shed a couple times, uh, but you know, whatever. Uh, oh, that knock's coming off. I need to set these knocks. You probably should glue these in if you want. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna end up gluing these, the little metal ring in there, the silver ring. I'm gonna end up gluing those in eventually, but because uh, I have lost a few of them. But anyways, uh, they seem to be doing all right. I, I don't have any issues with this arrow rest. Uh, but I do not, uh, I do not like the sight. The sight is not going to work for me. Uh, I'm sure it'll work great on a compound bow, uh, but it's not going to work great on here. So I'm going to ditch this sight and try something else. So, I don't know, I'll figure something out. I really do not want to put a recurve sight on here, so I think I may just bare bone it. Looking at my sight picture that I was using with this sight, uh, it, I know where I need to be with the arrow, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. Uh, that's pretty much it. And since I'm here, we're just more shooting. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't, obviously. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you're watching this on Facebook, uh, give me a like, maybe share it. I don't know, whatever. I'm going to do some shooting. Live too low. Hold on.